What's up guys, my name is Eric Young and welcome to another exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this. And also this. Sorry for the delay, I've recorded it once and messed everything up and realized why, so I'm re-recording. A few quick things I want to point out. This is not particle displacement inside of Element 3D. We will be using Cinema 4D, Fuse, and Adobe After Effects to be making this, as well as Element 3D. So if you missed my last tutorial, I showed how to import Fuse animations into Cinema 4D and then into Element 3D to make the lighting easier and just the whole process easier. So if you didn't see that tutorial, I'll leave a link to it in the description. We'll just get started here from the MixAmmo site. Some things I want to point out quickly is these are all the free models from their website, but be careful with them because this Paladin J Nordstrom doesn't do well inside of Element. It messes up all the textures as well as some of these other ones. So just be careful. Some ones I've noticed that work pretty well are the Galarian whatever male wizard and this female paladin and also this mutant all work but I would not use them on this tutorial I'd make your own characters that I have up here for this tutorial because the textures will just get thrown off using these free characters from the website I also have this army brute that I made but uh, we'll go ahead and just use the tough chick And the animation we're going to be using is jump over. You could have a guy swinging a sword into the glass, a guy breaking through a wall, all sorts of things. You just got to use your creativity. But we're going to go with what I showed you already, the jump over animation. And then we'll go ahead and open Cinema 40. And we'll go ahead and start off by making some new materials. So just go ahead and make one. Make it, I like yellow. And I'm going to call this boundaries. I don't know if I spelled it correctly. And another new material, I'm going to make it blue. Call that one glass. And then we're going to go to file, merge objects. Find that FBX we saved. Go ahead and shift click all this and make it a group. And then we'll look at the animation so we can see where she jumps. We'll go ahead and make a cube. I like cubes better than planes because they're just easier to see inside of element and planes are too thin. So this will give you a better idea of where the floor is. We'll go ahead and add yellow texture. And then we'll go to the cube and we'll go to simulation tags create rigid body and turn the dynamics off so it doesn't just fall to the floor now we'll go ahead and make the glass I can't take full credit for this I uh, learned from this guy video for it how to make the uh, glass shattering that I'm about to show you there's also a different way with a plug in here called the source I or whatever and that will just split things but it makes them jagged which I don't really like unless you're bashing through a wall it looks kind of bad on glass because glass should just be more thin and sharp and that's what this tutorial will help with so I'll see leave a link to this tutorial in the description in eight minutes he'll show you how to break glass inside of cinema 40 but I'm gonna try to show you how to do it faster we'll go ahead and make a plane positive Z rotation the segments width and height one one all right so that looks pretty good and click C to make it edible you can also press control Z to go back and then we'll go to polygon mode right click it select knife and just cut it up pretty good the more cuts the more shards but not too much. Now right click it, go down to 
subdivide. And that will subdivide at one time. And then go to right click, click disconnect, and untick preserve all groups. And then we'll go ahead and add the glass texture to the plane. Next thing we're gonna do is go to MoGraph and Fracture. Then click on the Fracture and set it to Explode Segment. And put the plane inside the Fracture. And then we'll right click and go to Simulation Tags on the Fracture and create Rigid Body. And then over here on Individual Elements, set it to All. And on Trigger, we'll set to Collision, on Collision. But you can see she's still not breaking the glass. So we're going to parent some things to her. First off, I just want to show you some really simple parenting things. So we'll go into the animation here and select the spine. Go to spine. And then we'll find her right arm. Go all the way down to forearm find right hand and this gun I placed in her right hand if I place it right here below the right hand it will stay in her right hand throughout the animation so now if I play she jumps with the gun I'll leave the gun in but I've had some texture problems with it in the past so I might just remove it if it causes any problems next thing we'll need to do is create a sphere And this is going to act as the collision detector for when she hits the glass pane. Also another quick thing we need to do is go to simulate and go to cloth and make a cloth surface. And drag the fracture into the cloth surface. Make it about 10 centimeters thick. And then we'll go ahead and add that boundaries material we made earlier to it. Control drag onto the sphere from the cube. Go ahead and call that surface. Call this a hit marker. And then right here under neck is her head. So we'll just drag the hit marker to her head. And we'll go into that tag and we'll trigger on collision. Next we'll just control C. Control V the hit marker. And I'm going to add ones for her feet and her hands, but you could go ahead and do their entire body, which would make it even better because all the glass would deflect off their body. If I don't do the entire body, where you might see some glass shatters go through like her legs and stuff. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to do her hands and her feet. Alright, so now let's play it and see how it looks. Pretty nice, that one piece flying in the air is kind of ridiculous, but other than that, it looked really good. So now we'll go ahead and create a place to save it. Also, let's go ahead and take this whole scene and group it. And then right here we'll have the textures. Tough chick, jump over. Move that into the folder I just made. Tough chick glass tut. And we're going to add some more boundaries so that when this glass falls, it hits something and it just doesn't fall straight to the ground. You want it to just be barely away from the glass. And then we'll just copy that tag in that same boundary 
uh, material. Alright, so once we're ready to render, we'll just select the scene, select the plugin Steady Bake, also include to links in the description for these plugins obviously, and then just click record, and then select all these three checks and click file series and click OK. File import 3D sequence and we'll just use the first scene, uh, first frame. So I already have the scene set up, so the first thing I'm going to do is just take some time moving everything into place. One trick to see what you're doing is lower the opacity of whatever texture you're trying to work on the model you're trying to work with. So next we'll go into the render here, we'll go to the boundaries, and we'll turn the force opacity down to zero. Looks like our gun rendered in with no problem. And then we'll go into pro shaders, and down to translucent, translucent. and any of these will work. I like frost, icy blues alright, chills one of my favorites. Make sure your comp is the same frame rate as the download, so make sure 60 frames per second. Unless you want to cut it down to slow mo, you just make it 30 frames per second. Also, make your slow, slow mo by going into the baked animation settings. And then just set the playback speed to 50%. We want her to freeze, we can just keyframe the baked animation. Move forward a frame and set it to zero. Press U to reveal keyframes on the layer. And then copy paste them and then select them and right click reverse keyframe. All right, so it looks like everything's set and ready to go. I'm going to look at the render settings and make sure they're okay, add some color correction and render this. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. And uh, I'm also going to show you quickly how to use the plugin method. So we'll go ahead and delete that, make a new cube and place it in the same spot. So this is as simple as just make a cube, make it the width and everything you want, and then just go to plugins, the source eye, and however many pieces you want. And right down here is also angles, and you can mess with that, but I like to just leave it alone. So I want 100 pieces. Make sure you go to the tag and change it from immediately to on collision. And there we go. I'm going to try again with like fewer pieces or more pieces actually. And there we go. That actually looks pretty nice. 
and then just move it into the scene. So just to make life easier, I'm going to duplicate this. Just disable her. Go to import, 3D sequence. So here's what it looks like with the plugin. This is why I don't like it. It's just a clusterfuck of jagged edge edges everywhere. And for color correction, I like to use Magic Bullet Looks. One other thing I meant to show you. We'll duplicate this one more time. The plugin layer, that is. Because although the plugin doesn't work really well for glass, it can work really well for walls. So let's find some concrete or something. But if we want to view the animation while we're in this view, we can just go here to frame offset. Just make sure you set it back to zero when you're done. Remember to set the frame offset back to 1, or 0 I mean. And there we go, I'm going to render these out. Thanks for watching this tutorial guys. If you liked it, please give me a like. If you disliked it, please give me a dislike. If you'd like to subscribe, please subscribe. And thanks to all of you that have been subscribing. I'll catch you guys next time.